So I will talk about the question, uh, how many Chinas exist in international law? As you may know, there are a lot of tension at the, at the moment in the South, China, South Chinese Sea, uh, and uh, many of them deal with the question, what is the real relationship between Taiwan and the People's Republic of China? And uh, this will be uh, the issue I try uh, to deal with and to make some proposals how we can uh, make a um, uh, 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 legal assessment. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank uh, Zhaoran Lin for his most valuable comments. Uh, Zhaoran Lin is a young researcher from China, from the People's Republic of China at our institute is one of the examples, the good examples of uh, young researchers from abroad, which uh, come here in order to uh, write a book on the one hand and at the same time to communicate with uh, the people working at the institute. This is the way how uh, science should take place. And therefore we are very thankful that he actively uh, helped me, I must say, helped me to, uh, to, to get more knowledge about the very difficult relationship between Taiwan and the People's Republic of China. And Zhaoran Lin will also make some comments at the end of my presentation. First of all, I would like to give you some uh, general ideas about Taiwan, everybody knows. Uh, uh, where Taiwan is. It is an island uh, of uh, the, uh, the mainland of China with a population of 23 million. Among them, 2% indigenous people. So people who are not really Chinese who have lived there for many uh, centuries. And on this island, by the way, it is said they, they were the persons who uh, went to populate the Pacific Islands in the uh, some uh, 1,500 years ago. Nowadays, 98% of the population is Chinese. Among them are 40% of persons who immigrated in 1949 at the end of the Civil War, at the end when the People's Republic of China was uh, established, and descendants of uh, such a person, 14% among the population of the island. The territory is 35,000 uh, square kilometers. It's more or less the size of Baden-Württemberg the region where we are living. Uh, the economy is um, flourishing. The GNP per capita is $37,000. And this means uh, Taiwan is almost on the level of the European Union. So one of the most uh, developed countries in the world. It is highly industrialized. It is the biggest producer of semiconductors. This is an important thing because semiconductors are uh, used everywhere, I might say, uh, for example, in cars, but also in weapons and arms. And therefore, uh, this is a very delicate uh, topic. And uh, you may imagine uh, that uh, the United States is specifically are not always happy if uh, Taiwan is supplying these semiconductors to countries which are not uh, in, uh, in good, good relations with the US. Uh, the trade relations between Taiwan and the People's Republic of China is $150 billion in uh, 2018. Uh, Taiwan always had a trade surplus, and the trade with the People's Republic is, is 25% of Taiwan's trade. China, the People's Republic of China is the main trade partner, trade partner of, the, of Taiwan. Uh, um, Taiwan has uh, some 180 mil, billion uh, uh, dollars of investments in the People's Republic. So you see there are a lot of relations between Taiwan, economic relations between Taiwan and the People's Republic. Now come to the history uh, between Taiwan and China. Um, uh, for a long time, uh, the island of Taiwan was not uh, under the direct uh, rule of uh, the mainland. There had been in immigration from the mainland, but the, the mainland did not stretch its own sovereignty over this island. Um, um, the immigration by Han Chinese reduced the share of the indigenous people more and more. But uh, this immigration did not lead directly to an, uh, to, uh, to an establishment of sovereignty, sovereignty 
over the island. In the 17th century, the coastline of Taiwan became a co Dutch colony for some uh, 40 years. And afterwards, the island was incorporated into the Chinese province of Fujian. Uh, so in 1682, uh, so it, it was not that, uh, that long ago. It's not a relationship of uh, many uh, hundred years. Uh, but uh, it was for some uh, a bit more than 300 years. Um, at that time, the expansion of the Han culture and the language uh, uh, started, and uh, uh, the uh, Han language became the main language in, uh, in, uh, in uh, Taiwan. Um, only in 1886, Taiwan became a Chinese province. Up to this point, it was part of Fujian, another province. So it was only part of a province. Only in 86, it became a province on its own, but only for nine years. And then there was the Treaty of Shimonoseki between uh, Japan and China, uh, where China ceded Taiwan to Japan. So in 1895. And this continued until the end of the Second World War. During the Second World War, the Kuomintang, which was uh, one uh, uh, party uh, also during the Civil War in China in the 20th century, they denounced all treaties with Japan, and among them also the Treaty of Shimonoseki, uh, uh, which again, uh, which was the basis for the secession uh, for the session of uh, Taiwan to Japan. Uh, during the war, uh, there was a conference in uh, Care in Cairo, um, where uh, Roosevelt, Churchill, and Chiang Kai-shek uh, participated. And there was an outcome document which stated in the declaration: "It is their purpose that all the territories Japan has stolen from the Chinese, such as Manchuria, Formosa, Formosa is uh, Taiwan." And the Pescadores, these are islands close to Taiwan, shall be restored to the Republic of China. The Republic of China. This was the common denominator or the, the common uh, notion for China at that time, Republic of China. Uh, Taiwan should be restituted to the Republic of China, uh, which by that time was still fighting a civil war. In 1945, there was a uh, paragraph eight of the proclamation defining the terms for Japanese surrender as part of the Potsdam Declaration. You know, the famous Potsdam Declaration of 1945 at the end of the Second World War. And there it was said the terms of the Cairo Declaration, which I quoted, shall be carried out and Japanese sovereignty shall be limited to the islands of nowadays China, oh, no, no, it's Japan. So, uh, uh, and there was a reference to the declaration of care. So a reference to the restitution of uh, uh, Taiwan to the Republic of China. Both declaration later were considered to be, be legally not binding by Western states. They said, no, these are just declaration political statements, but not by binding documents. And this was questioned on the other hand by the People's Republic of China. The Western state said, no, it was just a, a, a form of declaration. Uh, and the Chinese said, no, there is some binding force in it. In 1950, Truman, the then president of the United States declared that there is only one China. So the United States, the position of the United States in 1950, one China. And the position of the United States changed only during the uh, Korean War, which uh, started in 1951, um, when it became clear that the government, the regime of the People's Republic of China, the communist regime, would not easily be toppled. It will, uh, it will stay in, in power. And uh, at that time, the United States changed their position. And, uh, and they said, you know, if you have a close reading, um, it is not very clear uh, to which country uh, Taiwan uh, belongs. And this was continued in the treaty, the peace treaty between Japan and the Allies, the famous Treaty of San Francisco of 1951, where it is said in Article 2, Japan renounces all right, title, and claim to Formosa, or the Taiwan, and the Pescadores. And it is not said to whom 
it renounces in favor of a rich country, it just says it renounces all rights. So there is a switch from the Declaration of Cairo and uh, the uh, framing of uh, the uh, Treaty of San Francisco. And in 1954, the Secretary of uh, State, uh, Mr. Dulles, uh, the US uh, uh, Secretary of State Dulles, uh, declared technically, technical sovereignty over Formosa and the Pescadores has never been settled and that future title is not determined by the Japanese peace treaty, nor is it determined by the peace treaty which has, was concluded between the Republic of China and Japan, I will talk about it in a minute. In, in the same sense, uh, Anthony Eden, at that time Minister of Foreign Affairs of the United, uh, United Kingdom, declared that the question of Taiwan is open. So we have a, a very clear switch in the position, in the perception of the Western states with regard to the position uh, uh, of Taiwan, specifically uh, the, uh, with regard to the question to which country Taiwan belongs. In 1952, uh, Japan uh, concluded a specific treaty with the Republic of China. And if, if I talk now of the Republic of China, I just mean the government on Taiwan, this is the Kuomintang government on Taiwan, and there in Article 2 it is said, it is recognized that under Article 2 of the Treaty of Peace with Japan, signed at the city of San Francisco in the United States of America on September 8th, Japan has renounced all right title and claim to Taiwan, as well as the Spratly Island, etc. But it was again not set in favor of which country. I would like to underline that uh, China was not party uh, to uh, neither to the, of course to the Treaty of San Francisco nor was the uh, People's Republic of China party to this treaty between J Japan and Republic of China. Uh, they were excluded uh, in San Francisco for the reason uh, that uh, they couldn't agree which government represents China at that time. Is it the government on, on Taiwan or is it the communist government in the mainland? And as I couldn't agree uh, upon it, they uh, didn't invite China. And this was a reason why the Chinese say these treaties are not binding for China. In Article 4 of the uh, peace treaty with Taiwan, it is repeated what has been said already in the 40s by the Kuomintang uh, government. It is recognized that all treaties, conventions, and agreements concluded before December 9th of 49, 41 between China and Japan have become null and void as a consequence of the war. It is not said that they were terminated, they have become null and void. And among the agreements covered by this article is, of course, also the treaty, the peace treaty of Shimano uh, which, uh, uh, which is the basis for the session of uh, Taiwan to Japan. If this treaty is now involved, what is the consequence? Normally, one would say uh, Taiwan was never ceded to uh, Japan. Uh, the United Nations says this was a very difficult, tricky question. In the United Nations, the Republic of China, the Kuomintang government, represented China until 1971. And at that time, the uh, government, the General Assembly, uh, adopted the, the resolution, the famous re resolution 2748, sponsored by Albania. And the People's Republic of China uh, rejected any idea of two Chinas as the United States may have insinuated by raising the question of who will represent China in the, in the, in the, uh, in the uh, General Assembly. And they claimed we are the only legal representative of China and there is it's no possibility to have another uh, representative in the United Nations at the same time. Uh, the United States said we, if uh, the, uh, the People's Republic, uh, the communist regime will represent China. This is the same as the expression of a member of the, from the United Nations. 
the United Kingdom, which had recognized the communist regime already in 1950, and of course the United, uh, Soviet Union, they uh, said no, the question of the representation uh, of China in the uh, General Assembly is just a question of the credentials, who are the legal representatives of China. It is not a question of a, 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 the expulsion of a state, it's just a change of the representation. And um, uh, this, uh, this, uh, this uh, uh, resolution then uh, uh, declared in the operative, operative part, it decides, so the General Assembly de decides to restore all its rights to the People's Republic of China and to recognize the representatives of its government as the only legitimate representatives of China to the United Nations. And to expel forthwith the representatives of Chiang Kai-shek from the place which they unlawfully occupy at the United Nations and in all the organizations related to it. So it was an expansion of the government of the rep representatives, not of China or Taiwan or the Republic of China or whatever. It was just a change of the representation. And this, uh, this resolution was voted by uh, uh, 76 members, among them France and the United Kingdom, uh, against uh, 35 and uh, 17 abstentions. There have been some attempts to bring Taiwan uh, into the into the United Nations, for example, in 1998. Uh, but in the end, it was always uh, rejected by the United Nations. As you know, uh, uh, Taiwan has not become a member of the United Nations or any uh, any international organization related to this organization. Uh, what is the position of Taiwan in international relations today? Taiwan is recognized by 15 states, mostly micro states like Nauru and Tuvalu, but also, for example, Paraguay, Nicaragua, and Haiti, and the Holy See. They recognize uh, they recognize the government, uh, the government, uh, uh, the, 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 the state of Taiwan, and they have official diplomatic relations with Taiwan. Um, the People's Republic of Taiwan, of, every, of China, always severes the diplomatic relations with the state which establishes such relations with Taiwan. This it comes close to what we call in Germany the Hallstein Doctrine, when the Federal Republic of Germany severed diplomatic relations with all states which recognized at that time the uh, German uh, Democratic Republic. Taiwan is a member in two international organizations with, this, uh, it's, uh, with a special status in the uh, World Trade Organization. And there it is called uh, Chinese Taipei, although not Taiwan, it's Chinese Taipei. It's a special area with a special, a special uh, 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 customary regime. And it is a full member in the Asian Development Bank as Taiwan China. Taiwan, China. It's not as uh, Taiwan as a state, the state of Taiwan or the Republic of China. Of uh, China, it is called Taiwan, China, and it has uh, Taiwan has signed many uh, free trade uh, agreements. Uh, for us, it's of course of a specific interest the relationship with the United States. And there are three uh, important com communiques uh, uh, declared or published by the United States and the People's Republic of China. The first in 1972, when, uh, where it is said, the United States acknowledges that all Chinese on either side of the Taiwan Strait maintain there is but one China and that Taiwan is part of China. It's only one, the one China policy. And the United States government does not challenge that position. So the United States in already in 1972, uh, in spite of the, of the uh, resistance against uh, the, uh, the resolution 2748 of the, uh, of the General Assembly, they, uh, they published this communique with the People's Republic of China and declared, yeah, we uh, acknowledge it's not that we recognize, but we acknowledge uh, this, uh, the position that there's just one, uh, one China. And they promised in this communique to withdraw all US forces from Taiwan. In 1979, the United States established diplomatic relations with the People's Republic, and it terminated at the same time the Sino-American Mutual Defense Treaty with Taiwan. So uh, there, uh, from this time on, uh, the United States uh, uh, 
considered China, the, the, the communist regime, as the official, first of the official representative of China, and second, that there is just one China. At the same, in the same year, there was a second joint communique of the United States and the People's Republic of China, where it said the United States of America recognizes the government of the People's Republic of China as the sole legal government of China. Within this context, the people of the United States will maintain cultural, commercial, and other unofficial relations with the people of Taiwan. So again, one China and one legal regime. This is the uh, the, the People's Republic, the, the, the regime of the People's Republic of China is the sole legal government of China. And um, at the same time, there was a Taiwan Relations Act adopted by the Congress and then the executive order by the government, which says the absence of diplomatic relations or recognition shall not affect the application of the laws of the United States with Taiwan. The treaties with Taiwan shall continue in force. The US is committed to provide defense articles, and this continues up to now. And um, the uh, unofficial relations are carried out through cooperation, which enjoy immunity like states. So this is, was a bit uh, uh, big use uh, position. On the one hand, they recognize the communist regime as the sole legal representative of China. There's one China. Nevertheless, uh, the United States continued to maintain relations with Taiwan. And in 1982, there was uh, uh, the third communique uh, of US and uh, the People's Republic of China. The United States government attaches great importance to its relations with China and reiterates that it has no intention of infringing on Chinese sovereignty and territorial integrity or interfering in China's internal affairs or pursuing a policy of two Chinas or one China, one Taiwan. So uh, here again, it underlined and emphasized that there is just one China. So we have three communities, all, uh, uh, all uh, oriented in the same direction, that there is, uh, shall be just one legal government and there shall be just one China. At the same time, there were the six assurances by the US to Taiwan, also of 1982, which have been published, by the way, only uh, some three or four years ago. Um, and where it is said, we did not agree to set a date certain for ending arms sales to Taiwan. So they, they reserved the right to continue to export arms to Taiwan. We see no mediation role for the United States between Taiwan and the People's Republic. So they, um, they have a certain reservation to take an active part in uh, the mediation or the negotiations between Taiwan and the People's Republic. Nor will we attempt to exert pressure on Taiwan to enter negotiations. And uh, there has been no change in our longstanding position on the issue of sovereignty over Taiwan. And it is not that uh, quite clear what, it, what this means when they say on the one hand, you know, there is just one China. And then on the other hand, they continue to have a relationship, <coughs> a relationship with Taiwan. What does it mean? The, issue, the position of the United States uh, of, uh, the position on the issue of the sovereignty over Taiwan. We have no plans to seek revision to the Taiwan Relations Act, which I presented to you, um, uh, and this communique of uh, the third communique of 1982 should not be read to imply that we have agreed to engage in prior consultation with Beijing on arms sale to, to Taiwan. So they, uh, again, they reserve the right to, uh, to, 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 uh, to bring arms to Taiwan uh, and without any participation of the People's Republic. And this policy, which is yeah, ambiguous, was qualified as the policy of constructive ambiguity. This is a notion which has been invented by uh, Kissinger at that time. And this constructive ambiguity, uh, of course, leaves some loopholes in the interpretation. Now, what is the position of Taiwan itself and, uh, and of course, of the Republic, People's Republic of China? There is this consensus of 1992 between delegations of the People's Republic and Taiwan, half official delegations, and there, it is said, both sides on the, of the Taiwan Strait agreed that there is only one China, only one China. However, the two sides of the Strait have different opinions as to the meaning of one China. To Beijing, one China means the People's Republic of China with 
with uh, Taiwan to become a special administration region after unification. Taipei, on the other hand, considers one China to mean the Republic of China founded in 1911 and with the dual sovereignty over old China. So they continued, both continued their position, uh, one China, but the question is who exercises sovereignty, uh, who exercises power over this China. In, 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 the Repub in, in, in Taiwan, the government on Taiwan, uh, they, uh, uh, they made a, a declaration in 2004, some 12 years later, there were the famous four no's and one without. They pledged, the, the government on Taiwan pledged uh, not to declare Taiwanese independence, not to change the national title from the Republic of China to the Republic of Taiwan, which could have been a sign of secession and independence, not to include the doctrine of special state-to-state -state relation in the constitution of the Republic of China, or to promote, a not to promote a referendum on unification or independence. This policy uh, later has been revisited. It was uh, put, the question was questioned in, ta in Taiwan, but uh, officially, officially was uh, not uh, withdrawn or, or uh, changed. Uh, there has been no declaration of independence uh, uh, by Taiwan up to this moment. And in 2016, the now president of Taiwan, uh, Mrs. Tsai, declared to keep the pledges. In, uh, within Taiwan, there are two uh, movements, let me say so. There is this Pan-Green Coalition. This is, uh, uh, this is composed specifically by the Democratic Progressive Party, which favors an independent state of Taiwan, independent state of Taiwan. So they, uh, this means they would, uh, 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 they would renounce the, uh, the, the claim that uh, the Taiwan uh, will exercise, uh, uh, is a representative of whole China, uh, but it will say Taiwan is an independent country. This is the, the Pan Green Coalition and the Blue Camp. This is interesting. Uh, this is the first line, the Kuomintang. They maintain the one China policy. Uh, this is, uh, these are the two positions within, uh, within Taiwan. But again, I would like to, under, to underline that there is no uh, official declaration uh, of independence at the moment. Yeah, I will uh, skip that. Um, the uh, perception of the Republic of, uh, People's Republic of China, there is one China. Taiwan belongs to China. The government of the People's Republic is the only legitimate representative of China. And they adopted a law in 2005. Um, this law uh, it says uh, should Taiwan declare its independence, the People's Republic reserves her right to use force. And here the Article 7 reads, the state, this is the People's Republic of China, stands for the achievement of peaceful reunification, peaceful reunification through consultations and negotiations on an equal footing between the two sides of the Taiwan Straits. These consultations and negotiations may be conducted in steps and phases and with flexible and varied modalities. And now Article 8, in the event the Taiwan independent secessionist forces should act under any name and by any means to cause the threat of Taiwanese secession from China or the major incidents entailing Taiwan secession from China should occur, or that possibilities for peaceful reunification should be completely exhausted, the state shall employ non-peaceful means and other necessary measures to protect China's sovereignty and territory integrity. So this means that in principle, they will, uh, the People's Republic will use peaceful means in order to achieve the reunification with Taiwan. But if Taiwan will take unilateral steps to uh, become independent, if, for example, Taiwan declared its independence, then it, uh, China will not exclude include the use of force. And at the same time, it's all, this is also important, it all, also said that if uh, it, uh, there is no uh, 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 hope anymore for, uh, for reaching the goal of a reunified China uh, via uh, peaceful means, uh, then even in the, such a situation, it will, uh, it will refer to and will use 
a non-peaceful means. So there is a certain threat in this law, and this law, of course, has at that time, 2005, again, it has been uh, harshly criticized. A uh, reaction by Taiwan, the government of Taiwan, uh, declared the law infringes upon the sovereignty, sovereignty of the Republic of China. But didn't say uh, the sovereignty of uh, the Republic of Taiwan or whatever, the Republic of China. And again, this is a, a Republic of China. It was uh, this uh, China on the government on Taiwan claiming sovereignty of a whole China. What are the conclusions? Uh, the historical developments after the Second World War. Taiwan was considered to be part of China. This is clear, the, 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 the declaration of uh, Cairo and the following statements made by the uh, by the Western states, uh, because, uh, you know, it said uh, Japan has stolen this and this uh, uh, has to restitute it, of course, to the Republic of China, as it was said in the Declaration of Cairo. And uh, this could not uh, be changed by unilateral change of the perception of the situation due to political developments. So once Taiwan uh, was considered to be part of Taiwan, it could not uh, be declared in the, uh, in the wake of the Korean War, uh, that uh, yeah, now uh, in China there's a communist regime which will uh, stay in power, and for this reason now Taiwan is not considered to be part of China anymore. This I think is not a very uh, Korean position. Second argument, the change in the representation at the United Nations in uh, 71 proves that Taiwan was not considered to be a state on its own. Otherwise, a different procedure for the expulsion of a member state would have been applied. And they just uh, yeah, changed the, the credentials. And this is clear. It was a, just a question of representation and not of a question uh, of, uh, the, the, uh, of uh, handling a, a sort of two-state situation. Taiwan was not admitted to international organizations. And if it was admitted on all, only on a specific uh, provisions, and with a, a specific uh, 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 and a, spe a specific name, the international community, with few exceptions of small state, does not recognize Taiwan. The U.S. did not defend the idea of an independent Taiwan, but it acknowledges the position of the People's Republic of China. Even Taiwan was never uh, itself never officially claimed to be an independent state. So. At this point, I must say there is at the moment just one state which is called China and China, the People's Republic of China, uh, of which Taiwan forms a part. Now, does the population of Taiwan has a right to self-determination? The external, external self-determination de de determination is restricted to situa situations of decolonization. Taiwan has never been a colony of China. Self-determination is restricted to people with a common culture, history, and language different from the other parts of the state. Most Taiwanese consider themselves as Chinese, however, however not in the sense that they are citizens of the People's Republic of China, but uh, uh, as Chinese. So it's not a different, uh, neither a different culture nor different uh, 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 language. And even the history uh, up to now, one must say there's, there's still the idea of one China. And the only development of a different political system does not create a right to self-determination. Even when I say, they, yes, they are democratic, they are democratic in, in contrast to the situation of the People's Republic, but this as such is in, in, in international law is not considered to be a reason for say, the exercise of self-determination. Um, yeah, and again, the government has never uh, invoked this right to self-determination. This, until now, this uh, doesn't play a role in the policy of uh, Taiwan. Uh, the use of force, uh, this is my last part, uh, the use of force, um, the, there is a prohibition of the use of force against other members of the United Nations. However, there is a tendency in international law to apply the principle also in favor of de facto regime. The question is, is Taiwan a de facto regime? Or may say yes. Uh, there is a government. There is a country. There is a there is a there, 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 there is a population, and there is a, the government is exercising to a certain degree the exclusive, the exclusive uh, um, power, state power over this area. Uh, and this is true. On the other hand, um, 
on the uh, on the other hand, there always has always been the understanding that there is one China. So this uh, the, the exercise of sovereignty also always claimed to go to stretch beyond Taiwan, and um, in this sense, the, and this was also the common understanding of the People's Republic of China and Taiwan. And therefore, the question is: if one may say that Taiwan is a de facto regime on the island itself, or is is it a de facto regime? With the uh, uh, limitation uh, that uh, that uh, with the recognition of the existence of only one China, in this sense, undermining, of course, the uh, the, the the right to be uh, independent. Um, this is, a, I would say, this is a de facto regime uh, in a specific status quo, with the consequence. Uh, that it can be changed uh, via peaceful negotiation, but neither by unilateral acts, acts uh, such as a unilateral declaration of independence by Taiwan, nor by the use of force as long as the status quo continues. So I would say that Taiwan has no right to declare independence and the People's Republic has no right to use force in order to change the situation. As far as the situation continues as it is, uh, there, uh, uh, yeah, it will continue. Yeah, it will continue and uh, change by the use of force is not possible. Uh, in case that the that the People's Republic of China will violate this principle and will uh, will go will use force against Taiwan, is this a situation where uh, other states, Western states, may refer to collective self-defense? Um, Article 51, um, there is the prerequisite of an armed attack against a member of the United Nations. Against a member of the United Nations, Taiwan is not a member of the United Nations. Now the question could be, is the self-defense under customary law, is it broader? Is there also self-defense of a de facto regime? Yes, but is there also the right of the collective self-defense even of a non-recognized entity? And here we are talking about a non-recognized entity. And this is certainly more difficult. With regard to ethnic groups, uh, think of the situation in Kosovo, it was clear that the then uh, European state or Western states could not justify their intervention in Serbia uh, with uh, collective self-defense because the measures taken by Serbia against uh, uh, the Kosovars, mostly Albanian people, uh, the, they, uh, they, are not, uh, uh, they are not an armed attack in, uh, in the sense of Article 51. Um, I would say um, that there is no right to collective self-defense of a de facto regime which is not uh, recognized because Article 51 serves the protection of states, the existence of states. It does not serve the implementation of the prohibition of the use of force. For this reason, we have the, seventh, uh, the, the chapter seven of the United Nations uh, Charter. So uh, the, uh, the, the Security Council should intervene, which of course will be very difficult uh, given that uh, China will have a veto right. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, I think that uh, the defense of, a, of, an, uh, of an, uh, an entity which is not, does not qualify as a state and is not recognized as a state, I think uh, Article 51 does not uh, give a legal basis for uh, the use of force in such a situation. And here will, I will stop, and I know that there is uh, there will be many interventions and questions, but first perhaps um, uh, Lin, if you want to add something or make some remarks, uh, then you can you should make it at this moment. Thank you.